Hello everyone and welcome to the new edition of Around the World in 80 Planes, this time in X-Plane 11. Around 32 of the 80 flights are planned for X-Plane 11, with the rest being in Microsoft Flights in 2020, as I continue to want to fly some planes in X-Plane 11, including this, the Coronado Piper Cheyenne 2. I'll be flying it from Felix Ebue Airport outside of Cayenne in French Guiana to Macapa International in Brazil at the northern end of the mouth of the Amazon River. The equator actually runs through Macapa, so we'll be crossing into the southern hemisphere on the next flight. Before we begin, a quick word on the motivation for flying around the world in a flight sim. I have many reasons, including a love of airplanes, of course, but it's also a good way to reinforce the enormity and complexity of this world, especially as I spend a lot of my time playing Kerbal Space Program and leaving it. It's tempting from the imagined vantage point of space to see Earth as simple and small, and also to talk about terraforming Mars as if it's just a matter of getting the right elements in the atmosphere and creating a substitute for a magnetic field. But that's about the equivalent to saying that if we put the elements to make up the human body into a tub, heat it up to 98 degrees Fahrenheit, we can expect to get a human. Uh, so taking a closer look at Earth uh, on a flight like this can give a better appreciation for how irreplaceable it is and how it will be far easier to protect it from disaster, especially human-caused ones, but also asteroids and the rest, than to try for even a pale imitation elsewhere. So. Keeping that in mind, and again, there are many other reasons too, uh, we will also be listening to the Apollo 14 audio as we appreciate astronauts who looked upon the Earth with kind eyes and understood in the real experience of seeing Earth how uh, vulnerable it is and how precious it is. And so we will listen in to uh, Alan Shepard and his crew, uh, continuing from where we left off in the previous video. So continuing there. And I will take off. We now show 14 at an altitude of uh, 3,126 nautical miles. Hmm. Okay. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 14, uh, 3,369 nautical miles. Thirty-four hundred and four nautical miles at uh, two hours or fifty-seven minutes. They're on the trip to the moon already. They've done translunar injection. I've got photo scenery here, but photo scenery that's available in Ortho 4 XP isn't super for this particular area. And uh, we're going to have a site handover from Guam to Goldstone at uh, three hours even. Over. Okay, understand. We're going to Goldstone at three, and we have a go for TND. That's affirmative. As you can see, there are seams and we, such. We uh, presently show 14 at a, a distance of uh, 3,858 nautical miles from Earth. Three hours. Uh, like a go for power arm. The cockpit in this is super dope. Fourteen. Just on your go for power arm. Okay. Whoa. I think the weather is just turn oh nope, it's fine. Standing by for a report of separation. <laughs> ah, they're doing the transposition and docking. Our data shows that we have separation. We're at uh, three hours, three minutes. Okay, you have to move separated. Turn around and start. Roger. That was Al. Couple of parking valves. Roger. Go ahead, Ed. You should have the uh, television here in a minute there, Cubs. Yeah. Roger, we're not uh, seeing it yet. I mean, it's obvious that uh, Microsoft Flight Sim has the, television should be coming through. the better scenery. 
The source for the Ortho 4 XP photo scenery here was Bing Maps, though. Receiving an image now. You are getting a great picture now. Okay. So that's Cayenne, the city Wait back there. City, uh, drogue. Down toward the bottom of the picture and slightly left. You might move the camera a little bit left and down about a half of a frame. That's real good, right there. Huh, that's an interesting no, sort of thing. thing. It looks really good. It's uh, right in the middle and steady. A stream of sediment like that? Fourteen now. Fifty one hundred to sixty eight nautical miles away from Earth. Launch vehicle digital computer, the LVDC. We're at uh, three hours, uh, nine minutes now into the flight. We're at uh, three hours, nine minutes, uh, 14, uh, presently uh, 5,441 uh, nautical miles away from Earth. You uh, see Kitty Hawk uh, moving in uh, for docking now. We're at uh, three hours, ten minutes yeah. of flight. Well, the Show scenery is not of, great uh, here. Uh, seventy-seven nautical miles. But I wasn't expecting a spectacular scenery in Microsoft Flight Sim either. Once we get to Macapa, though, I'd like to see how the Amazon looks in Microsoft Flight Sim. It will be the first time I've seen the Amazon, I think, in Microsoft Flight Sim. Five feet. 
Um, stand down and commentary here for a moment. And Houston, we're about to dock. I think maybe the inside is better than the outside. Uh, well, as long as we keep it at this angle, it's not too bad. We're at uh, 3 hours uh, 13 minutes and now on the flight. We're probably uh, a foot, uh, 18 inches to 2 foot out now. We're at uh, 3 hours uh, 14 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show uh, Apollo 14 at a distance of 6,184 uh, nautical miles. And we docked. Roger, we can see the flight oscillation. Ed Mitchell reporting that Apollo 14 uh, Command module, uh, Kitty Hawk, uh, has docked uh, with the lunar module. We're at uh, 3 hours, uh, 14 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, Apollo 14 presently uh, 6,318 nautical miles away from Earth. I'm going to get the name of this river, but I don't know if I can pronounce it right. Aproague River? A-P-P-R-O-U-A-G-U-E. Oh, and let me just make sure that that's this one. There's a number of rivers. Yeah, yeah, that's this one. Next We're river at, mouth uh, up. Three hours, uh, 17 minutes uh, now into the flight. 14 now, 6,600, uh, 6, uh, uh, nautical miles away. Next river mouth will be the border between French Guiana and well, we Brazil. Back off here and, uh, think about this one, Houston. Roger. They're unable to get a capture. Uh-oh, they're Roger. unable to get a capture. That's uh, Stu Russo and Ed Mitchell uh, reporting that, uh, at least at this point, uh, they're unable to get a capture. We'll stand by. Okay, Houston, uh, we backed out a little bit, and uh, that last time I uh, hit it pretty good. And, uh, <laughs> hit it pretty good. Not getting, uh, getting the capture latches in there. Roger, we suggest you uh, verify if you haven't already the docking probe circuit breakers on panel 8. That's verified. And stand by one. The next river is the Oyapoque River, and that's, that's the border. So that huge outlet there is the border and between we French Guiana to, uh, and Brazil. Extend on the uh, docking probe, extend retract switch, and check the talkbacks gray. Okay, uh, we did that when we extended, but we'll sure do it again. And then back to retract. Just following along the coast here. Okay, we get both gray in the uh, extend position. Right. And we go retract in both gray. Oh, bad patches there. Uh, 14 Houston, one other suggestion. Go to panel 229 and check the EPS group 4 circuit breaker. Okay, it says they're both in. Roger. Uh, 14 Houston, we're about out of ideas here. Um, uh -oh. I suggest you verify you got to switch back and retract, and then give it another try at docking. <laughs> Can you turn okay. it off and on again? <laughs> we're at uh, 3 hours 20 minutes. Uh, Apollo 14 will be coming forward again for another try at docking. Yeah, in this case, the cabin is my favorite Three element here. Minutes, so we show 14, uh, we might stick in here for a little bit more miles away from Earth. than in the last flight. Uh, 
14 Houston. Go ahead. Uh, we suggest that uh, at the initial contact that you hold plus X for uh, three seconds or so at least. Okay, Houston, we tried it before, but not quite three seconds. Okay. There has a fair, a good rate coming in this time. Well, I suppose I'd better keep a better eye on my fuel this time, huh? Got 300 pounds per hour. Okay, Houston, I hit it pretty good and held four seconds on contact and we did not latch. Did not latch. Uh, Roger. We're seeing it all on TV here. You heard uh, Stu Russo, uh, still no latch. Now, where's my the, total uh, quantity? has a period of time that they can continue with this attempt. Uh, the uh, restricting item would be as, uh, as long as we have uh, attitude holding on the S4B. We're at uh, three hours, uh, 25 minutes. Information at uh, 3 plus 34 24. A uh, non propulsive event and the booster will be sequenced on. We don't expect to uh, see much from it. Can I say that again, please? At uh, 3 plus 34 24. A non propulsive event and the uh, booster will be sequenced open. Over. Okay, we got you. Okay, uh, Houston 14, I can look in the drogue and I can see three marks 120 degrees apart like the capture latches are uh, scratching the, uh, the uh, drogue. They're about, oh, I don't know, inch and a half along uh, going into the uh, hole in the uh, drogue, about spaced about 120. Roger. Still trying to find where my fuel. Oh, maybe up here. Uh, 14 Houston, can you describe the uh, nope, that's power. Are they sharp scratches or uh, rounded off? Over. Well, I didn't really see that good. Uh, I can move back in, I guess. We can take a look at them. Uh, they look like uh, fairly distinct uh, scratches. Uh, Just need my total fuel quantity. I've got the not, flow. Move up and we'll take another look. But I'm not quite seeing it. We're at uh, 3 hours uh, 29 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we show 1480-683 nautical miles away. Uh, Houston 14. I mean, I did load enough, I think, this time. Okay, really? I'm sure you're all thinking this along the same lines, but, uh, you know, if the capture latches were depressing as uh, I slide into the drogue, I don't see why they would have made those uh, marks. Uh, yes, that's been discussed here. Uh, we think probably something is holding them out. One possibility is a uh, sort of a shear pin that is pulled off when the tower is jettisoned. And uh, first look at it looks. We're thinking maybe that uh, may not be able, may not allow the uh, capture latches to depress. Uh, those clouds have baked into the photo scenery. Okay, uh, we're uh, we're nice and comfortable. <laughs> we're nice and comfortable. Just around here about this range and uh, try not to use any more fuel than I have to. Roger. Remind you have about three minutes till that vent uh, will come open. Keep an eye on the booster when that happens. Okay. How about you give me a mark on that duty? Will do. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, three hours, uh, 32 minutes. Uh, that was Stu Rusa troubleshooting with the ground. Uh, as uh, you have heard, uh, 14 at this point. We are in Brazil now. Has uh, been unable to affect the capture uh, in the uh, docking procedure with the lunar module. There's a heck of a problem to have for them, huh? Uh, 32 minutes. Uh, 
continuing to monitor. We show uh, Apollo 14 presently 9,151 nautical miles away from Earth. Of all the things that could go wrong. But actually, failure to get a good dock uh, less than a minute, has uh, caused many time, problems. Including preventing one of the crews of Salyut 1 from entering the station. Control Houston, uh, three hours uh, 39 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. Discussions continuing to take place here in Mission Control, uh, uh, attempting to uh, come up with a solution to. Uh, uh, Houston, we observe that the uh, F 4B is slowly rotating us now. Roger, Ed. Perhaps in Brazil we'll get Apollo control more consistency with the photo scenery. I'm not sure. Three hours, uh, forty minutes into the. I'll be in a lot of clouds. Discussions are continuing in Mission Control concerning our uh, docking problem. Oh, we've got some the, uh, turbulence apparently. Just a brief bit of turbulence, apparently. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, the uh, pacing item. Uh, I am using real-world uh, weather, as I did for the previous the flight, though not at the real the, uh, time, battery power is, for convenience uh, sake. Constraining item in that. Uh, however, it uh, does allow us a fair amount Oh, that's of the fuel right there. Six to eight hours. Continuing to monitor... Uh, the, uh, oh, we have plenty. Operation here in Mission Control. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. More than three hours worth. We the presently uh, show Apollo 14 at an altitude of uh, 10,643 nautical miles, and we're at a ground elapsed time of uh, three hours 42 minutes. The flight's only 313 nautical miles here, and our ground speed right now is 258 knots. So. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, three hours, uh, 43 minutes into the flight. Troubleshooting uh, continuing in mission control. Uh, to uh, quickly uh, repeat, uh, we have uh, been unable to uh, latch uh, with the lunar module. Uh, we have uh, quite a while to, to uh, consider uh, an approach to this problem. The uh, battery power on the S-4B is uh, perhaps our major constraining item, uh, allowing us perhaps uh, six to eight hours of time. However, if we're not able to extract the uh, uh, lunar module, of course, the uh, lunar landing mission would not be possible. Uh, we're at uh, three hours, uh, 44 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor. Oh, uh, we've got an area where we do not have photo scenery here. That's the border. While we're, uh, we're 
working on the problem here. We suggest you go to a five degree dead band and adapt. That'd be a adapt load of one, 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 two to save RGS. And uh, nobody's come up with a good suggestion on what to do about the windows. I guess they just won't worry about it now. All right, like I say, I think it's a minor problem. All right, you're out. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 3 hours uh, 53 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we presently show 14 at an altitude of uh, 12,310 nautical miles away from Earth. Uh, to again go over our problem, uh, the uh, capture uh, latches uh, uh, have not been working. Keep One standing the, to the uh, left. Being considered, uh, here. I tried using uh, aileron trim, but it does too much. Along to the crew as to uh, uh, retract the probe. As usual, I'm not using autopilot and, on these uh, flights. Attempt uh, to uh, bypass the uh, capture latches, uh, hoping to get uh, the uh, to the docking latches. Uh, there are 12 uh, docking latches, and uh, to uh, successfully dock, uh, we uh, would need three to work. If uh, we're not able to extract the, the lunar module, uh, I repeat, uh, our uh, lunar landing mission uh, would not be possible. Uh, it is a uh, certainly a serious problem in, in terms of uh, the mission itself. Uh, however, uh, it is not that consideration in terms of crew safety at this time. We're at uh, three hours, uh, 54 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor. We show Apollo 14 at uh, 12,481 nautical miles away from Earth, and uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. I mean, it's a rough one considering the previous mission was Apollo 13 and that was a crew safety uh, issue, but failing two moon landings in a row would be Apollo 14, Houston. a rough thing for NASA. I'd like you to try one thing. Uh, take the uh, end retract switch to retract and tell us what the uh, talk back read and retract if you haven't noticed before. Okay, Gordon, uh, you want the uh, the switch in retract and a read in, a readout of the talkback? That's affirmative while the switch is in retract. Rod, it's in retract now and the talkbacks are gray. Okay. All right, John. Okay, that, that tells us right there that the capture latches are indeed cocked, and that kind of says that there's something in there that's keeping us from releasing them when we go ahead and dock. And it says we cannot fire a bottle. It just wasn't fired, that's the true indication. It would not fire. It would not fire. Right. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, four hours uh, now into the flight. Uh, we, uh, in mission control, uh, continuing to troubleshoot our uh, docking problem. We're currently the, over uh, Parc National de Cabo Orange. Uh, still underway, both uh, in the uh, Orange, mission maybe. control room operation floor proper and with the uh, span or the back room uh, experts. The uh, capture latch is, uh, has not been working. It uh, is a uh, problem which can be uh, considered and uh, discussed and played with for a while. The uh, constraining item uh, would be the uh, attitude uh, on the uh, third stage, the S4B, and, and uh, Perhaps the most critical point there is the uh, battery power uh, and this uh, approximate lifetime of uh, some six to eight hours. Again, if we're not able to extract the lunar module, the uh, basic uh, lunar landing mission would not be possible. And uh, of course, an or a consideration of alternate missions uh, would have to be made at that time. We're at uh, four hours, two minutes uh, into the flight. Uh, we show 14 at an altitude of 13,523 nautical miles. This is Apollo Controlled Houston. Uh, 
14, Houston. Go ahead. Another question. Uh, can you remember back to the initial uh, probe extension? Did you hear a thud as though it did extend out? That's affirmative, Gordon. I guess you should have mentioned that sooner. Yeah, we got the thud and uh, we got, got the a thud. Uh, back on Barber Pole, then uh, immediately back to Gray. Uh, but we did feel uh, feel the thud. Uh, I just did. Apollo Control Houston, uh, four hours, eight minutes into the flight. Uh, we show 14 at an altitude of uh, 14,294 nautical miles away from Earth. Uh, discussions are continuing uh, in the Mission Control Center concerning our, uh, our docking problem. A uh, probe and drogue model, if it has not yet been brought in, uh, will be brought in shortly <laughs> to uh, aid in the discussions. It should have been there already. Four Come hours, on. Uh, nine minutes what are they waiting on? Continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Why are they taking so much time to get a model of the docking port, the probe and the drogue? Should have been there already. Control Houston, uh, four hours, uh, 14 minutes. Uh, the uh, color uh, converter is uh, is off the line at the moment, uh, being recycled. Uh, we're uh, showing black and white at this time. No, oh. pops out. No, I don't want it to pop out. And suddenly it's got the little thing that measures my FPS in there. No, I don't need that either. Hopefully it'll disappear. There we go. We're over stock scenery. It's not going to be very intense unless we've got a lot of buildings anyway. Try the docking again with the normal procedures prior to going to more drastic alternate procedures. Drastic alternate procedures. Frequency Smash into it. R1 should be 11102 for docking. I uh, would like you to go to extend release and hold it for uh, at least five seconds and then uh, return to retract and uh, proceed with one more try at a normal docking. Over. Okay, we'll put a narrow dead band in and uh, we'll go extend uh, four or five seconds at least and back to retract and uh, bang it again. Roger. <laughs> As uh, you heard, uh, Capcom uh, Fullerton uh, passed along to uh, Stu Rusa and other crew members of 14 that uh, we're going to make another docking attempt uh, with the uh, established procedures uh, prior to uh, reconsidering uh, alternate plans. We're at uh, four hours, uh, 16 minutes, and now into the flight, uh, we show uh, Apollo. Houston, uh, make your closing rate on this try. Uh, not not fast, not slow, just a normal closing rate. Okay, we'll try it. 
I thought that's what I had first time, but we'll give it a go. Okay, we'll try it. Nope. I thought that's what I had first time, but we'll give it a go. Don't know why that got repeated. The first time uh, looked that way to us, we just like to try it again. Okay. Still chugging along at basically 260 knots. On the command module stuff, there seems to be a light echo prior to us being able to hear it in full volume. I don't know if that's a tape thing or something. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 4 hours uh, 19 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, Apollo 14 uh, pressing on now with uh, another attempt at docking. We show. Uh, spacecraft now at a distance of uh, 15,821 nautical miles uh, away from Earth. We'll stand by and continue to monitor uh, four hours and 19 minutes and now into the flight. Uh, Houston 14, are you ready for the extent release position for the switch? That's affirmative. Go ahead, Al. Okay, it's currently in retract. I think it's time to by Mark in five seconds. Mark. All right, barber pole stayed gray, back to off. Barber pole still gray. All right, guys, that. Back to retract. Barber pole still gray. All right, guys, that. Talk back, stay gray all the way through. Affirmative. Tense moments as they have to this figure out if there's any chance. Houston, uh, four hours, uh, 27 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we show Apollo 14 at a distance of 16,889 nautical miles away from the moon, or away from uh, uh, the Earth. There has uh, been no uh, voice communication uh, with uh, the Apollo 14 crew uh, for some time as... Uh, Again, I'm cutting out the silences. ...pressing on uh, uh, for another attempt at docking. And in mission control, a uh, probe and drogue assembly is on hand and discussions are continuing here as to possible alternatives. We're at uh, four hours, uh, 28 minutes into the flight, uh, continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. I have to constantly correct with this thing. We're never deviating very far from our course, but takes some attention, which I guess is a good thing. Oops. Ed Mitchell uh, making the report at uh, 4 hours uh, 31 minutes. Uh, they're starting to close in again at uh, 
on another attempt to uh, dock with the lunar module. We uh, presently show uh, Apollo 14 at a distance of 17,453 nautical miles away from Earth. I keep pressing the button for changing the view in flight sim instead of here. No latch. No, no, no latch. Roger. Well, it's too much to hope for that repeating the same thing again would yield a different outcome, but you never know. It's Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 4 hours uh, 33 minutes. Uh, you heard uh, that report of no latch. In uh, the control uh, center, uh, we have a probe and drogue assembly. Looking very closely over it, our uh, backup uh, commander, uh, Gene Cernan, along with uh, John Young and uh, Chet Lee, uh, mission director, and uh, John Llewellyn, uh, who's uh, uh, one of the uh, flight control team. We're at uh, 4 hours uh, 34 minutes, and uh, we show Apollo 14 at a distance of uh, 17,729 nautical miles. Well, that's something, that line down there. <laughs> I don't know what it's supposed to be. Uh, Houston 14, I'm sure you're thinking about the possibility of... Uh, I think it's some sort of small river. Look at, as we are. That's primitive. Uh, we may have one more uh, procedure to try Oops. prior to going to that uh, standby one out. There's a highway to our right there. Uh, BR-156. That uh, was Al Shepard uh, who made the uh, suggestion uh, apparently being considered aboard the spacecraft as, as, as it uh, certainly is uh, here in mission control that of uh, depressurizing the cabin and uh, yeah. Uh, bringing the probe inside uh, for a closer scrutiny. I was wondering we're if they at, were going to uh, suggest hours, that. Uh, 36 minutes into the flight, we show 14 at a distance of uh, 17,994 nautical miles away from Earth. I, I joked about their uh, drastic measures or whatever they called it, uh, saying that I was banging them together, but they're already banging it together. Uh, the drastic measure was to depressurize the cabin and actually go outside and see what the heck is going on. All right. Oh, I think there's like, photo scenery uh, over there. Some more words on exact, uh, I missed this block, drove, but the I think the coast has photo scenery right now. Okay, uh, I'll give you, try to give you the best. Uh, as I look at the probe, and then y'all can figure out uh, where the docking latches are from there. But as I look at the probe in the docking position, uh, the prominent thing are we have three scratches about, oh, maybe a couple inches long. And uh, they're really, uh, well, the, the top one's about essentially 12 o'clock, uh, maybe 11.30. And then they're spaced, uh, you know, equally around the ring about 120 out. Now, uh, there is one other scratch I didn't see before that I must have put on this last attempt. I noticed it as we backed out, and it, well, there, there are a couple other little ones, but the next prominent scratch is, uh, oh, at about the uh, 7 o'clock position. It starts at the uh, hole and runs out for about 3 inches, uh, maybe 4 inches. Right. And all these scratches are radial, and they're right up at the very apex of the drogue. 
Well, that's what it really looks like. And certainly the photo scenery, when I've got it, in Brazil looks uh, better than what was available in French Guiana, notwithstanding the clouds. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 4 hours uh, 43 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, you heard the discussions uh, between uh, Gene Cernan uh, now at the, the uh, Capcom position and uh, Al Shepard. The uh, bottle reference, uh, this uh, bottle I was of hoping he'd explain. nitrogen which activates a pneumatic system uh, that retracts the probe. Uh, this is perhaps a consideration uh, that will be pursued at this time. Oh, at, uh, I guess they have a limited number of bottles minutes, to retract uh, the probe. Show Apollo 14 at a, an altitude of 18,928 nautical miles. Yeah, I was wondering about the bottles. So yeah, they use nitrogen for the pneumatics. Okay, Houston, uh, we'll review what we're going to do for you. See if it's the right thing. Stu is going to make the approach close at a very slow rate uh, to the initial contact. He's going to call out at that time and uh, apply plus X. I will then go to the retract prime one position. 
that, that's it, Al. Uh, that, that should uh, should do it if that uh, if that probe does actually retract, and if our alignment is good enough, uh, the possibilities are pretty good of picking up the dock and latch. Okay, your, your theory is it's going to retract because you feel the capture latches are locked. Well, I actually the impression here is that it is not going to retract. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. Control Houston, uh, four hours, uh, 47 minutes uh, now into the flight. Pete Frank uh, over the flight director's loop uh, advised his ECOM and his uh, flight planning officer to uh, consider uh, procedures uh, for the hard suit uh, if we are uh, unsuccessful in this upcoming attempt. We're on our way in now, and uh, we're going to try the plus X until it's, after initial contact, try the plus X until it's settled down uh, for perhaps a second or two, uh, and then go through the retract cycle at that time. Roger. Apollo Control Houston, uh, four hours, uh, 50 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, the booster systems engineer has uh, just advised uh, Pete Frank, our flight director, that his predicted uh, lifetime uh, on the uh, booster is uh, 13 hours, 18 minutes. A little bit uh, more room to our right the, side now as far as the full scenery. Uh, part of the hardware to degrade uh, would be the batteries. And that's a predicted lifetime now of 13 hours, 18 minutes uh, on the uh, third stage. We're at uh, four, uh, four hours, uh, 51 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show uh, Apollo 14 presently at an altitude of 19,930 nautical miles. This is Apollo Control Houston. Oh. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Boy, are they relieved. We uh, noticed no response for approximately two to three seconds after initiating prime ret retract one. We then got uh, barber pole on both, went gray on both at the hard dock. Roger, Al, that's great. Super job, Stu. Thank you. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, you heard uh, that report. There was a, a cheer in uh, Mission Control when that report came uh, from Al Shepard. We're at four hours, uh, 58 minutes, uh, standing by. Uh, we show 14 at 20,700 nautical miles away from Earth. Well, I mean, you must have figured they would fix it somehow because... Paul 14 did land on the moon. Roger, we'd like you to uh, proceed on now with the normal hatch and tunnel procedures. <laughs> I bet it was quite dicey there. All nice and consistent in here. We're passing by SBAM. And Houston, I'm turning the TV off now. Roger, Ed. Uh, looks like Amapa Airport. Roger. Well, it still wants to wiggle back and forth a little bit. No, not Santa Barbara. I was looking for a spam. 
S P A. Uh, Al, can you can you just give us a, a qualitative feeling of? Uh, yep, what it just a map. Like, uh, when those docking latches did go, did you get a, a, a sort of a ripple bang, or are you convinced you got quite a few of them? Uh, yeah, it was a ripple fire, Gino. You know, I'm convinced we got quite a few. Yeah, that's that sounds uh, pretty familiar, Al. It, it sounds like you really probably. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see if you got them all. Yeah, I think we got quite a few. You know, it was a, it was a good hard dock. Somewhere around yeah, here is a town called. There it is. That's the town Amapa. And you can see the airfield back there. I believe it. Yeah, we're gonna buy a new present from here. Under the circumstances, I don't know why they set the airfield that far away from the town, but. Uh, not a whole lot else going on, but I'm sure there's a reason. Uh, Ed, uh, would you repeat your last, please? Right, we're starting to check the Delta P for three minutes. Roger. Delta P is the difference in pressure between, I guess, the command module and the LEM. Houston Apollo 14, we have lost one tenth of one pound per square inch in the Delta P gate during the three minute period. We'd like to proceed to, as we are. Roger, Al, uh, stand by. One thing Flightson doesn't seem to have is dirty uh, water. To go with that. Which at least the uh, photo scenery here seems to preserve. preserve. So I don't know how well we can land in rivers and such. Apollo 14, Houston, would like you to verify the H2 fans off. That's verify. Roger. It's a very complex landscape. Roger, Ed. Obviously affected by the outflow of the Amazon here still. Lots of rivery stuff going this on. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're at uh, 5 hours uh, 13 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo 14. The uh, present uh, distance reading uh, for Apollo 14 is uh, 22,480, uh, uh, 22,503 nautical miles away from Earth. And uh, following that uh, successful hard docking, uh, Apollo 14 is proceeding on uh, with our basic mission plan. The uh, crew, of course, will have a chance to look at the docking mechanism uh, during the uh, translunar coast period uh, uh, while Antares and uh, Kitty Hawk are docked. Uh, we're at uh, 5 hours, uh, 14 minutes into the flight, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. RCS quantity numbers just uh, should make you feel good. Uh, he used 131 pounds so far, which is 62 pounds below nominal, but you're still 211 pounds above the red line number. So Apollo Control, Houston, uh, you heard those. Uh, Still uh, 211, 211 pounds above the red line. At Houston, we got all the uh, docking legends. Roger, I understand you got them all. Very good. Uh, I'll check it carefully now, but that's his first report. Roger. 
those uh, were reaction uh, control system uh, usage rates uh, passed along to the crew by uh, Capcom uh, Gordon Fullerton, uh, responding from the spacecraft, was Ed Mitchell. We're at uh, five hours, 19 minutes down to the flight. Uh, we presently show 14 uh, at a distance of 23,125 nautical miles away uh, from the Earth, traveling now at a speed of uh, 12,486 feet per second. We got all the latches, and everything was fine. All we had to do was uh, just tap on number two and eight to uh, lock the handle down. Uh, Roger, Stu. Uh, if you haven't uh, bled the uh, nitrogen with the uh, red button, uh, don't for a minute here. Oh, you caught us in time. Uh, we have not bled it. Okay, stand by. We'll make sure that what Ecom wants to do here. I'm beginning a gentle descent. Not hurrying it or anything. We're about three quarters of the way into the flight here. Okay, after a uh, massive discussion here, we've decided to uh, have you go ahead with the procedures as you see them in your checklist there. To verify the extent latch and gauged indicator not visible, and then go ahead and bleed the uh, GN2. Okay. Apollo 14, Houston. Oh, yeah, Houston. Roger, in uh, five to 10 minutes, the S4B uh, fuel pressure should get up to the point where it'll vent. It's through a non-propulsive vent. Shouldn't affect you uh, much, over. Okay, five to 10 minutes, thank you. And we're just about to put the hatch back in. Roger. Go ahead, 14. Okay, Gordon, uh, is there, uh, just want to make sure that uh, we're all talking on the same frequency on this ejection and uh, and the maneuver and anything. Have we got any changes to any of those uh, procedures? Tiny town to our right is Tartar, Tartarugalzinho. Uh, uh, Sorry. I guess what <laughs> I'm wondering is... Uh, Tartarugalzinho? That's a tough and, uh, one. So forth, it's all one so word. Okay, so Oops. stand by, I'll get a good Oh gosh. Then. Okay. Uh, Gordon, be advised, we're on page L37 and ready for prelim seven ejection. Uh, Roger, Ed. Uh, 14, Houston. Go ahead. Go ahead. Roger, uh, essentially, uh, like you go through uh, procedures and as uh, you would have nominally, the, uh, the only anomaly with the uh, booster is right now is the uh, that we have lost the downlink from the uh, launch vehicle digital computer, and so your visual indications of its attitude and maneuvers are the only ones that we'll have. Uh, uh, we have no uh, readout on booster attitude down here. And uh, actually, we've lost uh, many of the uh, downlink parameters on the booster. However, it shouldn't affect the uh, evasive maneuver and uh, targeting to uh, impact. Over. Okay, Gordon, that, that, that's what I was wanted to clarify before we. Uh, Press ahead, so we'll uh, we'll press right on down and uh, as nominal and give you the call when we see it and so forth. Roger. Can't say it's the best sightseeing plane in terms of the cockpit view from the passenger seats. It's a little bit different, but 
Oh, but view. Can't really look down minutes. that easily. At present time, in mission control, you know, we are from this side, handover. for instance. Uh, Those engines, but is coming on to relieve flight director sort of like the way they poke uh, out. Frank, so uh, there's that. that. Handover will occur following LEM extraction. A short while ago, uh, flight director was asked uh, when LEM extraction would occur. His response was, uh, whenever the crew is ready. Uh, the crew is proceeding uh, to extract the LEM in the normal manner at this time. And uh, following LEM extraction, there will be a change of shift briefing in the large auditorium in Building 1 at the Manned Spacecraft Center News Center. A short while ago also, Gene Cernan, who was on the Capcom console, made the remark uh, following the successful docking that, uh, uh, in paraphrasing, was uh, something as follows. Uh, Cernan remarked that I guess that practice we had this morning in the crew quarters paid off. Uh, he was referring to a mass which was said for him and for Stu Rusa in the crew quarters at Cape Kennedy this morning. Uh, recapping the docking situation, the docking uh, was tried a total of six times before the successful hard docking occurred at uh, four hours, 56 minutes, 46 seconds. On the sixth attempt, the uh, sixth procedure attempt. was for the 14 crew to maneuver up to the command, uh, up to the lunar module uh, using the probe to align the vehicles properly to bring the docking mechanism in proximity uh, with the docking ring on the lunar module and at that time to attempt to retract the probe mechanism hoping that the docking latches would then come together would be properly aligned and that uh, hard docking could occur. Uh, this in fact is what appeared to happen although it is not certain at this time uh, whether or not the uh, docking probe did in fact engage and latch as it normally would or whether the uh, docking mechanism uh, came together with the docking latches engaging uh, merely by virtue of the fact that the probe mechanism was retracted. Uh, in the normal docking, the probe, which is a... Power alarm, please. Do you have a go for power alarm? Okay. Uh, the go for pyro arm indicates the crew is preparing for LEM separation. Uh, we'll continue to uh, attempt to recap, uh, returning to live conversation in the event the crew or the Capcom uh, speaks up. The normal docking procedure would be for the probe mechanism to engage the drogue in the lunar module. There are three uh, small latches in the tip of the probe which extend after passing through a hole in the end of the conical drogue mechanism. Uh, this is soft docking. At this time, a pneumatic system actuated by a nitrogen pressurization uh, draws the two vehicles together, uh, pulling the, uh, retracting the drogue, or uh, rather retracting the probe, pulling the docking mechanism together and hard docking. I think we can see the Amazon over there to our left. Just in the distance there. We have a report now that uh, the crew is thrusting minus X, which would indicate that they are extracting the lunar module from the S-4B at this time. Roger, we're, uh, we estimate that's probably uh, stratification. Oh, Roger. Sorry, it's also type 1 and 2, just dropped down. Roger, we saw that. Our telemetry data indicates that the 
Lamb is clear that the crew is maneuvering now to the attitude for the evasive maneuver. Apollo 14, Houston, uh, we'll be standing by from you for a, that you have uh, the S-4B visually and a go for the uh, maneuver. Okay, Gordon, uh, it's just now coming out from behind the limb for me in the, uh, in the left window here. Uh, about another uh, 15, 20 seconds, we ought to have a good view of it. Roger. Oh, they've discovered an interesting sound right there. Only briefly, though. There are some wacky sounds and, on tapes uh, sometimes. Okay, we're well clear, uh, Gordon, if you want to go ahead and uh, do the yaw maneuver at your convenience. Roger, Stan. This is Apollo Control at five hours, 55 minutes. Oh, well, yep, a that is the Amazon over there. The proper position for the apps evasive maneuver. Looking sort of an appropriate uh, color, frankly. You heard reference to the fact that... Lots of sediment uh, and such. Data from the S-4B uh, is limited. Uh, and uh, this lack of data uh, has complicated the... Uh, sent a checkout command to the booster, which looked good. So uh, we're getting ready to start the yaw maneuver now. Hey, why don't you give me a mark uh, when it's coming? All right, will do. Fourteen Houston will be uh, commanding at five five plus three zero. About uh, five seconds from now. To be clear, though, that's the north end of the Three Delta. Mark. Or the Amazon. As we approach Macapa. Okay, and she's, uh, she's moving, uh, Gordon. I just did. The S4B oh, moving into let's descend a little bit faster. For the apps evasive maneuver. Not that fast. <laughs> a little bit faster. Plenty of fuel. No problems. Definitely overfueled this time. But this plane has hours and hours. Potentially. Our communications officer reported a dropout in data. They're checking to uh, determine the cause of it. Uh, the concern mentioned previously about the uh, controlling the S-4B for the apps evasive maneuver referred to the fact that a multiplexer apparently has failed in the S-4B instrument unit. Uh, the primary concern here is that uh, in performing the maneuver, uh, there are certain systems that flight controllers don't have as good a visibility into as they would prefer. However, the fact that the S-4B responded to the yaw maneuver command properly indicates that the systems are responding as they should, and the apps evasive maneuver using the auxiliary propulsion system on the S-4B uh, will be performed as scheduled. Uh, this will be a 10 foot per second maneuver, uh, giving the uh, separation distance between the S-4B and the lunar module and will be supplemented uh, by a propulsive LOX dump maneuver. 
the uh, LOX dump maneuver is uh, designed to reduce the probability of spacecraft recontact. Away from uh, looking at us, and it's a beautiful sight. Register, it sounds good to us. Uh, we had some question about our command capability, and it sounds like it's okay. Oh, yeah, she's, uh, she's going away from us. Yeah, I'm, I'm not using the internal GPS, obviously, otherwise the estimated time Following en route the, uh, would be rather bad, but I've got uh, external app for navigation. Uh, there will be targeted uh, a burn determined uh, or targeted to uh, impact the S-4B on the lunar surface at approximately 33 degrees west and 20 degrees south which is near the Apollo 12 landing site. And it is expected that uh, this maneuver will be carried out as planned. You heard Stu Roos in that last exchange report that the S-4B was responding properly to commands and appeared to be coming around uh, in the proper attitude. Apollo 14, Houston, would you give us Omni Delta? Okay, you have it, Houston. Thank you. Apollo 14, Houston. Go ahead. With a go from uh, you up there, we'll plan to initiate the APS evasive burn at 6 plus zero four even. Over. Okay, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's well uh, four-sided away from us, and uh, we'll be standing by. All right, sir. This is Apollo Control at 6 hours, 2 minutes, 18 seconds. A little less than 2 minutes away now from the scheduled auxiliary propulsion system evasive maneuver on the S-4B. Capcom Gordon Fullerton advised the Apollo 14 crew that that maneuver would occur at 6 hours, 4 minutes, with the liquid oxygen dump scheduled to occur at 6 hours, 25 minutes, 20 seconds. and the evasive maneuver should be going now. How does it look? All uh, right, uh, we, uh, we see the booster moving. Again, the clouds we see are just baked into the photo scenery, unfortunately. We currently have clear skies around here, it seems like. Now, the last thing you can do for us uh, on this, uh, because of our lack of determining the booster attitude is as it fades out of view, uh, if you can determine if it's still looking stable, over. Okay, we can sure handle that, and uh, you got some venting there too as you uh, started that maneuver. Roger, uh, that's, like uh, that's normal, that was expected. Okay. Apollo 14, Houston, would you go to manual and wide on the uh, high gain, but stay in Omni Delta? Okay, you got it. Thank you, Ed.
This is Apollo Control at six hours, nine minutes. We've completed our shift handover now in Mission Control. Flight Director Milton Wendler and his team of maroon flight directors, flight controllers. The Flight Dynamics Officer has just advised the Flight Director that he does not anticipate a mid-course correction being required at the opportunity for mid-course correction one. Uh, this would mean that the mid-course would not be made until the mid-course correction two opportunity. At the present time, Apollo 14 is traveling at a speed of 11,237 feet per second. The spacecraft altitude is 28,593 nautical miles. There will be a change of shift briefing in about 30 minutes. The briefing will be held in the large auditorium in the MSC News Center, uh, Building 1. Go ahead, 14. OK, uh, Gordon, I'm sure, sure you all have been uh been talking about it. You want me to press ahead with the uh, maneuver to the P-52 attitude and uh, go into that? All right, Mr. Stewart, that's affirmative. We'd like you to go through uh, with the normal procedures as shown in the flight plan down to uh, that P-52 at five hours and 40 minutes. But at that point, we're going to deviate slightly in order to save some RCS. We would, do not want you to do the uh, fuel cell purge or the wastewater dump. Uh, we're planning to have you, or, or, and we do not want you to do the uh, go into PTC. At that point, we're planning to do the uh, P23, which will be a little early, and we'll have a new attitude for that. And then we'll go into PTC. Right now, it looks like mid-course one is uh, not likely to be necessary, so that we'll save. Uh, well, it's sort of a uh, PTC bit of asphalt uh, there, we'll but that's not the airport. Over. Okay, uh, Hopefully it's now, a nice uh, big airport. Macapa is not a uh, small city. That's it up ahead. As soon as you uh, get to your attitude there, we'll be ready to uplink the uh, new uh, rest mat to you. Okay. Oh, the looks like the airport's actually on the northern end of the city. Uh, Houston, Fort Day, do you want me to start a battery recharge? Stand by it. Oh, I think I see it. Ed, that's affirmative. Go ahead with the battery B charge. Is that SBMQ? Yeah, SBMQ. Doesn't look like autogen buildings have been built on this stuff, though. Alas. Ed, Houston, I've initiated battery B charge. Oh, Roger, Ed. Would you give us Omni, Charlie, Ed? Okay. Well, we might as well just land. Roger, and... Uh, at about 625.20, the lock stump should I trust it will look better in right Microsoft uh, Flight Sim, that's for sure. That time, I'll give you a warning about 10 seconds prior. Okay. Capcom Gordon Fullerton was uh, advising the crew that the dump of the liquid oxygen remaining in the S-4B uh, will occur at 6 hours, 25 minutes, 20 seconds, ground elapsed time. Uh, 
Nope, can't really see the airport with the engine in the way. Venting of the liquid oxygen, which is aimed to increase the separation distance between the lunar module and the booster third stage, and also is targeted to impact the S-4B on the lunar surface near the Apollo 12 seismometer. We're now at six hours, 25 minutes, some 20 seconds away from the liquid oxygen dump. 14 Houston, that lock dump should start in about 10 seconds. Okay. First bit of flaps. The booster reports the dump is initiated. Here. Turning. Apollo 14, Houston, the lock stump should be complete now. Did you see anything of it? Yeah, it's a beautiful sight, uh, Houston. The sun was shining from the side. It was streaming out. Uh, we tried to get a couple of Hasselblad shots of it from the corner of the window. It's really fantastic. Uh, Roger, Al. That was Apollo 14 Commander Al Shepard reporting a very spectacular sight with good sunlight on the liquid oxygen uh, particles streaming out of the nozzle of the S-4B. The LOX dump is scheduled to be followed by an additional Step two and Roger, and we'd like you to try to bring up the high gain now. Uh, use a pitch of plus two eight and a yaw of plus three one seven. Over. Let's take a look at how it is outside. Roger, two eight three one seven. All right. Once the high gain antenna is brought into play, we should see uh, a marked increase in signal strength. Okay, a little bit bouncy the here. The LOX dump from the S-4B uh, will be followed by an additional maneuver to target the S-4B to the proper impact point. Uh, that maneuver uh, performed with the auxiliary propulsion system. Yeah, uh, mm. It's not reacting super well right now. Okay. That's a little bit better. Ed, this is Houston. Uh, we're having a little problem with our readout of high gain antenna angles here. Would you read out your onboard pitch and yaw angle? Roger, the pitch of. Ooh, one said 10 to the right again. And aileron trim doesn't really help too much. Uh, okay. Uh, say again, the yaw. About 330. This right. isn't a wind tendency. This is sort of a roll tendency I'm talking about. Ah. It's been the case for most of the flight, too, so... Eek. 14, Houston, we have the rest mat and... Uh Bias Maybe I need to there. check my joystick calibration X-2011 since I haven't okay. been playing it too much. Uh, Okay, go down before you stall, please. This is Apollo Control at 6 hours 33 minutes. I've also we'll got XP Realistic, which is a briefing. thing that adds effects to a thing, like leaning and stuff like that. The live air -to -ground circuits and record Haven't really the used that too much. For playback following the change of ship briefing. Uh, one bit of information oh, I wonder if I'm using the right key for brakes. <laughs> right. Commander I was using uh, I was using the wrong key. Ah, I can't turn it. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
resumed spontaneously at uh, one hour 30 minutes ground elapsed time. At that time, the Capcom asked if he did anything to fix the sensor, and Shepard replied. Maybe I should just oh. turn around. Uh, the uh, yeah, let's turn around. On all three crewmen during the docking attempts. Are oh, I keep using the wrong key for brakes. So the I keep using the key the for the Microsoft Flight Sim brakes. Uh, Stu Russo, who was piloting the command module at that time, uh, had a heart rate of about 120 beats per minute. Uh, the other two crewmen, Shepard. All right, Mitchell, shoot, we'll park were here. Averaging <laughs> around 70 beats per minute. And during the final successful docking attempt, uh, Russo's heart rate went from 120 to 144. Seems as good as any other place. At the present time, the Apollo 14 crew is performing a program 52. This is a, a platform alignment. The spacecraft traveling at a velocity of 10,739. I'll wait till he stops stalking. And now at a distance of 31,236 nautical miles from Earth. Okay, so that's the end of that little part. But here we are. We have reached our location in Brazil, Macapa, and we will take a look and see how it looks in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.